Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to give an update for Samantha Humphrey's case, the 14 year old that's missing in Schenectady, New York. I'm going to play some videos for you. Uh, they give a lot of explanation of kind of what new has developed. And then I have an article that I'm gonna go through um, with you as well. Breaking new developments in the search for a missing teenager in Schenectady. Dan Levy spoke with Samantha Humphrey's mother. He joins us live from Schenectady with the latest. Dan, good afternoon. Mark, good afternoon to you. Just like everyone else who's involved in the search for Samantha Humphrey, Samantha's heartbroken mother, Jacqueline, wants desperately to find out where her daughter is and what happened to her. And of course, this is coming at a time when more information is coming to light about what was happening here at Riverside Park before Samantha disappeared. That disappearance uh, occurred one week ago tomorrow, last Friday night. We know that 14-year-old Samantha Humphrey hasn't been seen or heard from since meeting up with an old boyfriend late last Friday night here at Riverside Park in Schenectady. A state police airboat with a team of rescue divers on board were searching the chilly, murky waters of the Mohawk River again today beneath an old railroad bridge. A state police canine unit was also seen again today scouring the banks of the river at this spot. But meanwhile, Samantha's mother, Jacqueline, uh, told me today that her daughter was told to stay away from her ex-boyfriend and that she had fallen asleep before her daughter left the house late last Friday night. And when Jacqueline realized her daughter wasn't home Saturday morning, she called police. And she also asked her son to get in touch with Samantha's friends to see if they knew where she was. And one of the people her son called did yield information that Jacqueline didn't want to hear. He called her um, ex-boyfriend who said that she was with her um, down at the river and that they'd gotten into an altercation and that he um she had bitten his hand attacked him and bitten his hand and then he left her there at the river and he just walked away you're looking at a live picture of that new york state police dive team they were picking up the red buoys uh, in the area they were searching underneath that railroad bridge it appears as if their search for today is ending they're losing the sunlight and uh, whether or not they'll be back tomorrow, I don't know at this point. I will check in with police. Uh, her mother did begin a GoFundMe page today, hoping to raise enough money so that she can hire a private detective. Now, coming up all new at 5 o'clock, you'll hear what the ex-boyfriend said the second time the brother called her that Saturday morning. Live in Schenectady with coverage you can trust. Dan Levy, News Channel 13. Mark and Sabrina, back to you. Dan, thank you for your reporting on this. So that is very concerning. And um, I don't know if it confused you, hopefully not, uh, with the dates. This ultimately was put out on the 1st, okay? So, um, yeah, and, and nothing, uh, this is the most recent, uh, then there's something that I'm gonna read to you that came out today. Well, you, technically it would be yesterday, <laughs> but anyway, uh, the, the fact that the boyfriend said that she bit his hand i'm thinking is his way of getting around the fact that there was likely blood on her jacket the jacket that was found on the edge of the water that they showed in that video you could see the jacket oh right here actually so right here looks like blood and so i'm wondering if that's kind of his like loophole slash a uh, good reason for why he would have just walked away and, you know, I, I don't know, but it's really concerning. I'm very worried about it. But let's take a listen to the second video here and see what the ex said when her brother contacted him the second time. There are new developments in the search for a missing Schenectady teenager. At 4 o'clock, Dan Levy reported exclusively about a physical altercation between 14-year-old Samantha Humphrey and her ex-boyfriend that occurred just before she disappeared. New at 5, what the ex-boyfriend now has to say when Samantha's brother called him back a second time. Dan Levy is live at Riverside Park with what he found out. Dan. 
Elaine, good evening. It was 11 o'clock last Friday night when Samantha Humphrey met up with her old boyfriend right here at Riverside Park. According to Samantha's mother, the two teens got into an altercation and that her daughter bit her ex-boyfriend on the hand. It was from that moment on when the mother's suspicion only grew. Yes, the two teenagers did meet up here underneath or near the old railroad bridge at the south end of Riverside Park. State police divers have been in the Chile Mohawk River much of today searching for evidence or perhaps a body. Those divers left the scene around 45 minutes ago. A state police canine unit was also back here today scouring the riverbank. Samantha's mother, Jacqueline Humphrey, told me today her daughter told her and told school counselors and told her friends that the ex-boyfriend was abusive. And that's why Jacqueline told her daughter to stay away from him. Jacqueline also asked her son to get in touch with Samantha's friends, including the ex-boyfriend, to find out what he could. I didn't speak to him. Per, my, well, my son spoke to him. And then a second time he called and I had my son put him on speakerphone and he was frantic and he was upset that the police had been by his house and he was asking why we would send police there and he was frantic that he thought he was gonna be in trouble. My gut feeling is that she did not just run away. I don't know what has happened to her, but I think she's either injured or hurt or in trouble or something worse. And determined to do everything she can to help find her daughter, Jacqueline started a GoFundMe page today, hoping to raise enough money to hire a private detective. Coming up all new at 6 o'clock, new information about the jacket that was found here at the Riverbank last weekend. Live in Schenectady with coverage you can trust. Dan Levy, News Channel 13. Elaine, back to you. All right, Dan, thank you. All right, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just taking a look real quick. Um, all right, here's going to be the next video. I just want to see... They don't have it attached. I'll take a look and see if I can find the GoFundMe and I will add it. If I find it, I'll add it right into the description in this video as well. And that way, if you do have an interest, you can click on it. Also, I will put it in um, Discord as well. So here is the third video. Also, there was another missing teen, uh, but they, you know, I'll talk more about her in the next, um, in the, the article that I'm going to read, but they don't believe that they have a connection of why they're we're both missing. They don't believe it's connected. They were friends. They were, but not connected. Breaking new details on the search for a missing teen in Schenectady. At four, we learned about a phone call between Samantha's ex-boyfriend and her brother. At five, what the ex-boyfriend told her brother over the phone after a second phone call. New at six, we hear from Samantha's mother who explains why her daughter was ordered to stay away from her ex-boyfriend. Also, that connection between Samantha Humphrey and another girl who is also missing right now. Dan Levy has been on the story from the start. He joins us live once again from Riverside Park in Schenectady with the latest on the search and also what Samantha Humphrey's mother is saying tonight. Dan. <laughs> Sabrina, good evening. To say that Jacqueline Humphrey is distraught tonight might be an understatement. And the thing that seems to be eating her up the most inside is why her daughter would come here to Riverside Park last Friday night when she was told to stay away from her ex-boyfriend. Beneath the cold, murky waters of the Mohawk River, state police divers were determined to find clues to the disappearance of 14-year-old Samantha Humphrey it was following a rendezvous with her ex-boyfriend at this old railroad bridge at the south end of Riverside Park last Friday night when the Schenectady High School freshman vanished. Something bad may have happened to her. She does not have a phone with her. She's obsessed with her phone. Jacqueline Humphrey told me today her daughter would have called her or would have called a friend if she could. She's disappointed Samantha chose to leave home six nights ago to meet up with her ex. She's not supposed to hang out with him. She's not like he's not supposed to be over here because like he's just not a particularly good kid that I can see. And I know that like they've been in an abusive relationship according to what she's told me, what she's told her counselors, what she's told her friends. During a search of the riverbank last weekend, this jacket turned up and its photograph, along with commentary and speculation about its authenticity, exploded virally on social media. That 
particular jacket was the jacket that she was wearing the last time that we saw her. Tonight, with her daughter still missing, Jacqueline is understandably not in a good place emotionally. My gut feeling is that she did not just run away. I don't know what has happened to her, but I think she's either injured or hurt or in trouble or something worse. And tonight, Schenectady detectives are searching for two missing young girls from this community. You know about Samantha, who disappeared last Friday night on the 25th. Earlier this month, on November 9th, Hodgele Howard went missing. Jacqueline tells me that the two girls are good friends. They spend a lot of time together, and they even have sleepovers together. And so the mystery deepens here in the, in the Electric City. Live in Schenectady with coverage you can trust. Dan Levy, News Channel 13. Mark, Sabrina, back to you. Dan, thank you. And we have more information on that other missing teen from Schenectady. And here's her picture right now. As Dan said, her name is Hadjale Howard. She has been missing since November 9th. And police right now, right now, they say there's no reason to believe that she is in any danger. If you do have any information, the number for Schenectady police is up on your screen right now. Please give them a call. So, so we continue. Um, here was just a clip of them searching when they were out, which is interesting because on the map I had shown on my first video, you could see that there is, uh, you could actually see where this bridge was. Um, I didn't know that that's actually where they were searching at that time, but that's rather interesting to know now that that's where they were. But let me bring you over real quick to the article. Okay, so this article, it says, Schenectady, the grandmother of missing 14-year-old Samantha Humphrey, says that her family is desperate for the girl's return as the search reaches its second week. Diane Humphrey's paternal grandmother said that she has confidence in the Schenectady Police Department and the New York State Police as they search for Humphrey, who went missing the night of November 25th. Quote, we want her back so much. She said with her voice cracking with emotion, you see people go through this and you feel bad for them, but you don't think that someday it will be you. Sergeant Patrick Irwin, spokesperson for Schenectady Police Department, said that the police continue to search the Mohawk River on Friday. Quote, we're in that area because that's her last known location, Irwin said. He also reported that the department has been in contact with Hay... Ha I don't remember how to say her name, right? And I don't want to completely ruin it. The second Schenectady ninth grader who was reported missing on November 9th. The police have contacted Howard through a third party, but have not located her as of Friday afternoon. The department does not believe that Howard is in danger and the agency has found no link to the two girls' disappearances. Quote, there is no connection between Samantha's disappearance and hers. However, they are friends, Irwin said. And so on Thursday, the grandmother said that she does not believe that Humphrey and Howard are together. I know they were close friends, she said. I had met her, but I don't think that they're together. Only because I don't believe that Samantha would not get in touch with me or her grandfather or father, Jeff, or her brother, Maddox. She's close to all of us. There's no reason she wouldn't call her brother if she was in trouble and let him know that she's in trouble. Whatever happened we would be here for her and deal with whatever it was. She said the family is sticking together during a traumatic period as much as possible. Her father is devastated as of course, as of course we are. Sam and her brother lived with us for a few years while her father was getting his nursing degree. So we're very close. We're just as much parents to them. We do everything for them. If they call us, we come running. So she would just not do this to us. She said that Samantha lived with her and her husband, John, from ages 7 to 13. The grandmother said the Schenectady police have been in daily contact with the family. She last saw her granddaughter November 22nd when she took Humphrey to a dentist appointment. She said that she talked to Humphrey via phone at approximately 6.45 p.m. on the night of her disappearance on November 23rd. And Humphrey was last seen at approximately 11.30 in the area of Riverside Park in Stock Stockade 
neighborhood that evening. She said that she wanted to come here on Saturday, the 26th, and have some leftovers from Thanksgiving, but then I could never reach her again on my phone. In a letter to district parents on Thursday, Schenectady City School District Superintendent, I don't know that name, um, noted that the district is working closely with the police department's youth aid bureau and is asking the school community to report any information about the girls to police. Quote, we understand that the situation may be difficult for our students due to what they may be hearing on TV or reading on social media, and they could be experiencing a range of emotions. He wrote, our team of school counselors, social workers, and psychologists are always available to help students. On Friday, they said that the school district community is still reeling from the news of the two missing ninth grade pupils who both attended Schenectady High School. I think that anytime we hear anything like this about any of our students, it's a punch in the gut, he said. We want nothing negative to happen to any of our kids. So to come out of a holiday break for Thanksgiving and the news you get on Friday night is that one of your students is missing, it definitely impacts our kids and our various communities. This is still fresh for our staff and students that know her. We're just all hoping for a positive outcome. He said that he was hardened to hear that the police had been able to connect with Howard through a third party. That's fantastic news, he said. Our hope is that maybe she'll not work through a third provider and come back to school and we can wrap around her and provide her the necessary support. So, unfortunately, that is where it currently stands. I do not know if they're still doing searches, I have not seen anything. I'm actually going to do one really quick look um, just to see if there was anything. But as, as far as I have seen, no, there wasn't. Uh, there there was nothing. So let me put that in really quickly. Uh, Samantha. Okay. So basically... I'm not. I'm, I'm only seeing the stuff that I have, right? There's nothing on <clears throat> even social media that shows, it. yeah, December 1st, unfortunately. And it was just that the mother confirmed uh, the jacket found near the Mohawk River last weekend posted on social media was definitely her daughter's. And so that's really, really, really sad. I would be terrified if that were me because this doesn't seem good. And the police are referring to it as a missing person still. But I mean, you're looking for a missing person in water. It's so bad. Please, everyone, pray for this family. Pray for Samantha. If you see her, you hear anything about her relay it to the police right away. I will continue to update you on any updates that the police end up putting out. And um, like I said, just please continue to pray. I will talk to you all very, very soon. Thank you, everyone.